lihat secara usia ini bisa dibilang mungkin usia emas mereka juga. Betul. Ukuran betul. tinggi, berat, sama ya, cenderung sama persis. Ya. Jangkauan juga kali ini cukup seimbang ya. Iya. Ya. Walaupun Peter Maigren baru lu tiga kali bermain, tapi dua diantaranya KO. Ini cukup impresif untuk pemain muda saya rasa. Iya. Kita bergabung dulu mungkin ya, Jer. Ya. To my right, fighting out of the red corner. He holds a professional record of three wins, zero defeats, one by way of knockout. Weighing in at an official weight of 124 and four pounds from Liverpool. Okay, boys, have a cold break, take a step back. No punches on the back of the head. But take yourselves all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. Ya, ini dia. Saat lagi kita akan saksikan Peter McGrath menghadapi Uriah Lopez. Mas dari Eko Arena di Liverpool. Kita akan segera menyaksikan dan selalu menyaksikan. Because Uriel Lopez is absolutely no mug. A seasoned gentleman, no doubt. But he comes to throw down. And maybe that might present an opportunity or two for Peter McGill to go through the repertoire. Great. Straight left to the body to start us off. We all saw what Lopez did in Rainton in his fight with Mark McGill. It was, a, it was an absolute cracker. I think Peter McGill is a different type of fighter. And may not let Lopez settle to even land many shots, as we can see already the class footwork from Peter McGrail. Really good stuff from McGrail. That backhand landing for fun. But you can just see oozing class and confidence. McGrail seems to be comfortable at all different types of ranges. Team GB pedigree, can't you? Just rolls in, lands, throws a big shot, splits off to the side. Out the back door. Yeah. Lovely uppercut there from the ground. Nice. I think lovely choppy left hand as well. Seems to be finding the target relatively easy through the first couple of minutes of this one. But again, it all comes back to what you were saying earlier on, Paul, in commentary of uh, previous fights. It's all down to his feet. It's all about where he is. F fundamentals of boxing is what you're taught from day one when you go into a boxing gym. The base and the foundations of your footwork, they should be everything, and then you build on that. Just landed another lovely little left hand there, Peter McGrail. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. that was a beautiful left hand. Lopez, hit Lopez felt, felt that, no hit doubt about hand. it. Beautiful shot. Mixing it up as well, those straight shots seem to be the money at the moment, whether they go upstairs or downstairs, the straight ones are the ones doing the business. You always see fighters like McGrail, you see fighters like the one of my generation was always Richie Woodall, he was a textbook amateur. Yeah. You couldn't tell someone to watch Peter McGrail and do what he does because it's so difficult to do, you know what I mean? He just makes it look effortless, he makes it look easy. The way he's moving and the way he's positioning them feet at the moment, it's absolutely class. Really good work there from McGrail. When you see someone like this fight who has a
it's a real understanding of range. It's a, it's a, it's a joy to watch because it's only mil the, the, the movements that they make are millimeters. It's literally, it's just the tiniest of movements. It might not even resonate on the television screen, but whilst you're here and you're up close and personal with it, it's just a tiny little, tiny little movement. He's out the way. Yeah, just bouncing there on his feet, you know, trademark of the amateur game. Just in and out, in and out. Lopez got no idea where the range is. Unfortunately, he's getting hit with two and three shots, and then when he does try and throw back against any other fight, he may well catch something if you get lucky. McGrail's gone, he's either gone out the back door, or he's just took that sack. The, the, your Lomachenko from the corner, Canelo from the corner twice. I've been in the ring with Andrew Ward. The best thing about those fighters is how they cover the ground effortlessly. Yep. Yeah. They make it look easy. Lomachenko in particular, along with Usyk, Usyk does it as well, they yeah. just do it so simple. They cover the ground so easy. How bad is it when you're in with one of them? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was painfully brilliant, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but you, I you turned into a fan. <laughs> yeah, he, he hit me with a jab, and I remember giggling to myself, how have you just hit me with that? <laughs> you, you were miles away two seconds ago, <laughs> were <weren't> you? <laughs> <laughs> Peter McGrail, I'm oh, oh, we got got this one. Yeah. he's known as the Scouse Lomachenko. Oh, 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 good oh. shot. And then returns one himself. And he has that movement also. He can cover the ground easily. He makes it look effortless when he's in there. Good return, lovely, from Peter McGrail, after catching one himself. Those type of shots, what he's just caught. Oh, beautiful left arm from McGrail. They may want to make him stay in the pocket of him, but you can have some back now. Yeah. Really good stuff from McGrail. He's got the timing down to a T. He's going through the repertoire. Uriel Lopez is game, he wants to throw back, he switches his own stance into southpaw. Now he's back into orthodox. He's a tough Mexican, this fella. Yeah. He's took some flush and he's still coming. Listen, Mark McKeon hit him with some flush shots as well up in red. Another big round, left hand! McGraw looking to unload! Jeez! Lopez's chin, absolutely rock solid. But he's taking him flush. Really good work from McGrail. Switching yeah, the angle there, just going on the outside and then coming back in. Really good stuff, creating different angles, giving Lopez something to think about. But when he puts those combinations together, it's fast and it is ferocious. And it's only going to take one to land really clean. To go, and again, just takes a little step back, the, the Mexican, but here he comes. Doesn't matter what stance you stand in, he's gonna clip you. He's got some fo some poker face. Lopez, he hasn't opened his mouth once this round. He hasn't changed that gaze and that stare. I'm sure he will when the bell goes and he walks back to his corner. It's been a torrid round for him so far. Oof. Just a little bit of a grimace there. That was the first time he's seen any kind of change in his face. I'll tell you what, ever since Lopez clipped wow. McGrail at the start of this round, he has just gone through the gears and put a clinic on. Really good stuff from Peter McGrail. And again, you know, we've mentioned this two or three times tonight now when we're suggesting for younger fighters to just relax and let it flow. Yeah. Look how he just okay. relaxes and lets these shots go, McGrail. And this is why Peter McGrail in his fourth professional fight having an eight rounder. Because he's ready, he's, been, he's ready to move up. The next one will be a ten rounder. I'm just, watching, I'm just watching Lopez make his way back to his corner. It was a zigzag, it wasn't a straight yeah, line. He, he came a little bit zigzaggy in. He's like, he puffed his cheeks out, looks at his corner, he says, what is this? <laughs> Fantastic stuff, really good stuff. Talk us through the action, boys, because after getting that little bit of a choppy left hand, he just went through the gears. That was the footwork, he just steps out of range. Lopez falls short, he makes Lopez fall short. McGrail and then lands a nice chopping left hand right on the target. And then, as I said, it hit Jordan at the, the fight, to Jordan that round. Shot that McGrail was caught with may have been sort of the, the, the not the wake up call because he was boxing fine. Yeah. But he might just think, well, you know what, you can have a few more now and I'm willing to stay in the pocket because I felt your power and it wasn't much, so let's go. Yeah. Go on, I'm going to put it on you. And that's what we see there. He, he went through the gears, didn't he? He went through the gears in that round and. Yeah, really good to watch. Suddenly Lopez now got green to do an eight rounds with McGrail. It feels like a mountain to climb. Well, here we go, it's the third of them. Switched his stances a couple of times, uh, did Uriel Lopez throughout the course of that second phase. 
but he's back in his orthodox stance now, matching up against the southpaw in the black shorts of Peter McGrail. She like that shot. Shot. Beautiful oh. left hand. He's going through the gears here. Is Peter McGrail? Little touch down. Oh. Into the neutral corner. I think just, just a little bit. Slip. Just a little bit of uh, communication. McGrail was going through the marshes there as the knee did touch down for Muriel Lopez. Not just down as a knockdown. But here we go. Let's get the action back on. McGrail. Really good shot once again from McGrail who lands that big left hand. And again. I said right at the I said right at the start of the fight, the straight ones are the ones doing the business, but now the ones coming around the side are doing the business as well. Really good repertoire from Peter McGrail, who mixes it up, goes downstairs. Heads coming close there. What do you do to beat Peter McGrail if you're Lopez? Yeah. Do you try and absorb this for three or four more rounds and hope he tires? Because at the moment, that looks like it's the only answer time, make him outwork himself, make him punch himself out. Because every time Lopez throws, he, he, he's, he's being made to miss. He's not missing, he's being made to miss. And the footwork of McGrail is, and the class that he's showing is what's doing that. Big uppercut from McGrail once again. I don't know about you boys, but the best way to describe McGrail is it. Oh, that's a big left hand. He hits it though, did Uriel Lopez. He's got some chin on him. He is taking some serious punishment through the first three. And again. Listen, I know it's not. The corner well, needs to have a little bit of a look Lopez, in a minute. But we're watching something special with Peter McGrail. My goodness. A little choppy uppercut on side that he throws, that left hand, lovely. Peter McGrail is going through the repertoire. I was just about to describe him as... Do you know like when you're in a beer garden on a hot summer's day and there's a wasp flying around your pint and you just can't get rid of it? He's like that. He is on you constantly. And he's going through the whole... Back what? catch that big left hand from McGrail! Lopez must certainly felt that one. He has a little bit of a look through squinted eyes at McGrail and says, OK. I'll go, I'll go southpaw for a minute. I'll tell you something, boys. If this goes on for another six minutes after this, if, if Lopez is still here, his corner's got to have a look at this. Because what's the point? He is getting his pants pulled down. Taking so many shots. Flush, Lopez. And again. It's an unbelievable display of mastering range and hand speed. McGrail. He got... He got an overhand left in the second round, which just made him check himself for touch. And ever since that moment, McGrail has just gone, right, OK, we'll go from second into fourth, and we'll put a foot down a touch. Even this slow-mo, it just started with a little push out of range from McGrail. And he stepped back in, let his own hands go. The minute Lopez starts to throw, he just pushes out of range where he's safe. And it's all from the feet and the footwork and the lateral movement of McGrail. See the step out of range, he just jumps out of range a few inches to come back and counter. Paul, even tiny little old man things like that, just the use of the shoulder to separate for the separation there, bang, out of the way, and the shots there for him. That's, that's, that's mature yeah. quality yeah. bounce yeah. in the amateurs against other, other fellow national champions from all the best countries around the world, and then camps with all your fellow peers, like the GB team and that's other cool. countries flying into sparring. Yeah. He's learned every bit of it and he's carried it into the professional game. Got to give Lopez his credit, though. He is game, this fella. Like I said, we saw him up in Renton against Mark McKeown. Didn't take a backward step that night. Mark McKeown got the job done against him in a real belter of a fight. And for different reasons, this is a real belter of a fight as well, because, as Paul said a moment or two ago, you're witnessing something very, very special. I know it's only early in his career, but as an elite amateur, a lot of people have been excited about Peter McGrail and what he could do in the pros. And he's showing you that he's levels above Uriel Lopez at the moment. And I won't be surprised, as Nick said a moment or two ago, if he's sped along the touch and we're seeing him in 10 rounders very, very quickly. I think the 10 rounder next, absolutely. And you're talking about, you know, mentioned it earlier on the broadcast, British and Commonwealth title opportunities, if not by the end of the year, certainly early into 2023. There's no good waiting with him. You know, we've seen it. A world title fight in his second professional fight, maybe not quite that quickly, but British and Conwell inside six or seven fights, absolutely for Peter McGrail because you can just see how quality is and imagine how destructive. Oh, big right hand, big right hand from McGrail. Lopez 
just checked himself for a second. But he's still there. You see the little push out of range here from McGrail. Whenever Lopez commits to attack, he just pushes out of range six inches and just nullifies and stops everything Lopez is doing to come back and counters them like this. So, really good so work from talented. Peter McGrail. Really good work from Peter McGrail. He looks so sharp as a pro as well. Oh, big left hand again as he looks to tee off. He can smell the finish in that. It's a sensational barrage. Lopez, has his heart been broken? He's having a look. He's thinking about it. He gets up. Steve Gray's waved it off. Rightfully so. Great referee from Steve Gray. Listen, we're hypercritical of officials sometimes in this game. Steve Gray's made the right decision there because that is only going one way. You didn't need to see any more. You saw enough. Peter McGrail going through the repertoire and giving the fans here in Liverpool an absolute treat, gents. Yeah, the Lopez corner demonstrating a bit there, but just look at the replay, you know. Absolutely sensational stuff from McGrail. I think the referee's made the right decision, but I can see the argument. He got up on eight, his faculties are all there. He's certainly not, you know, dazed and rocked and can't stand up, but he's took far too many punches. Yeah. And you don't want to see that. It's better to have an early stoppage than a late stopping. So I fully, I fully agree with Steve Craig. It was the fact that it wasn't one clean punch that put him down. It was momentum. He chose to go he down. Went down, yeah. And exactly. he chose to get up very, very late. That means he's had enough. You know, his heart's breaking. I've had enough now. And it's only the will in the man that's made him get back to his feet. Think it's a great decision by Steve Gray to and, pull him and out. And it's the corner that's got to save him, Mother Equity. In the corner, we're never going to save him. Absolutely. 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 I think, like I said, we're hypercritical of officials when they get it wrong. We've got a present when they get it right. I yeah. think he got that absolutely bang on, Steve Gray. Right decision. Peter McGrail was going through the gears and it was only going one way. Great performance uh, from Peter. Exciting times ahead for him, Nick. No oh, doubt, mate. Ow. I tell you what. You mate, might be right, mate. You might be right. We've seen tons of scouts' talent on this undercard tonight. I'm delighted to say the future is golden. But I tell you what, the future for Liverpool boxing is standing right there. Peter McGrail, absolutely phenomenal. World titles in his future, 100%. And that's coming from a scouser, and he's not being biased, I promise you. I'm not a scouser, I feel the same way. Uh, right, let's get uh, this all official, shall we, with Melissa Santos. Referee Steve Gray stop the fight at two minutes, three seconds in the fourth round. For your winner, by technical knockout. Cannot argue with that. Four wins in his professional tenure.